Okay, looks good, looks good. And roll into it slowly. Go for it, go, 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 go. There you go, little left break, gentle right break, there you go. Beautiful, right break, right break, breaks. Nice job, Troy. Keep it on the road a little bit more before you leave the ground. Thumbs up. Risers on. Carabiners locked. Okay, so we got a bit of a crosswind from the right, so the glider's probably going to come up that way. Let's follow the ridge. So let's get up above it and then follow the ridge, Troy. So bring it left, Troy, bring it left. Okay, this is high enough. You can ease off, ease off. So we need a place to land. It looks like a flat spot over on that mountain right over there, Troy. Either that or the big mountain off to the left, down at the end might have something flat. Let's head off to the left there. to that mountain straight in front of you. Uh, Got to find a place to pitch a tent. 
I don't want to be into the wind. We need a little bit of a saddle of some sort. All right, there looks pretty cool. It's probably rougher than it looks for launching, though. Landing should be no problem. It's the launch. I'm a little want to make sure we got a good runway. So watch me and pay attention to me because I'm not looking at you, Troy, so stay away from me. Mountain Meadow! In the middle of nowhere! <laughs> yeah! Okay, Troy, did you see how I did it? Now you're gonna crank a hard left and bring it straight back to the hill again. Bring it left, bring it left, there you go. Bring it left, bring it left, bring it straight back to the hill. Hug that hill, there you go. To the left, to the left, there you go, there you go. Bring her down, there you go. Now you can cut back left, cut back left a little, cut back left a little, there you go. Set her right. But only if you're going slowly. Lots of brakes for this one. Lots of brakes, Troy. Lots of brakes, lots of brakes, lots of brakes. Yeah! Super Troy! Do do do! <laughs> Look at this, Troy! <laughs> Is this the coolest place ever? Fly camping! That's awesome! Super Troy, give me five. Yeah. High five. High yeah, fives. <laughs> what do you got to go pee? <laughs> Is that freaking cool or what? Yeah, Did you have to go pee? Yeah, I had to go pee. <laughs> like when we got around here, I was like, oh shoot, I got to pee. Yeah. Holy crud. 
This ground is rough as crap. Holy cow. Wow, that's pretty wicked. <laughs> this ground is seriously just rough. Look at that. That's pretty wild. All right, we should set up our tent. Is this the coolest spot or what? Yeah, we should try and pat down some of the gravel where we want to put our tent. A uh, little runway? I don't know. Maybe if we get a little bit of wind. You know, the other thing I was thinking is we could uh, we could pull the trikes up there and then launch down the hill. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The, uh, that would make it easier. But we also have this shot where we take off from here and go out that way. I'm just a little worried about how fast we're going to go. But it'll be a piece of cake. We're supers. We can do anything. Hoorah! Boo yeah, fly camping in the mountains. Did you see that view? Did I did I mention the view? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Super Troy here. Yup. My 14 year old super kid. With air trikes in the mountains. Wow, that's awesome. Look at this view! <laughs> we even got a full moon. It's gonna be a full moon tonight. That'll give us some light. This is gonna be cool. Awesome, awesome. Okay, this is awesome. Got our little campsite here. Two air trikes, flat top ninjas, super Troy stuff in our glider in the back of the tent. Uh, stuff it like normal. There you go. Two air trikes in the sunset, coolest thing ever. <laughs> That's so awesome! We landed on top of a mountain. Me and my super son here, Troy. Super pilot, 14 years old. That's it. Heck yeah. Youngest tandem pilot to ever take cute girls tandem for kisses. Yeah, that's true. For instructional flights, of course. The, uh, I got you. Look at this. This is so awesome. That's the coolest thing ever, huh? That's hey, sweet. Can we go back down and sleep? Okay. I'm tired. Camping time. High five, high five, oop, hold on, Skeeter, Skeeter, okay, alrighty, Skeeter. this is sweet, dude, that's so cool, look at this, it like goes all clear over Holy here too, holy crap, well that looks cooler than the other side, I think, well, that's like wicked, it's like you in it, and you scrag a little bit. 
The wind's like coming from this way. Oh, okay. In the morning, God's going to give us wind from that hill, though. That's it, right? Yep. Or no wind. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to want a little wind, though. Yep. It's going to be an adventure. Hey, we got a full moon, so we got light. All right, let's book it. The, uh, we're in a real cool spot. Wait till you see the video. This is freaking coolest spot ever. <laughs> the, uh, we found kind of like a little saddle in between two mountain peaks. We're at 9,200 feet. And, uh, and, and we have like a little flat spot to camp and like a huge runway. Although it's a little rough, but air trike should be jamming. So, But we also have a hill too, so we can also launch down the hill so that should help as long as we don't have a tailwind but hopefully we'll get a little headwind if possible and some downhill and then we'll be off the ground in like 10 feet but okay okay love you sweetie nighty night okay kiss troy here's what that was troy Okay, bye. <laughs> so what do we got going on? Good morning. I love my Troy. us yep, now it is. It was but kind of it might be down. going up that hill it was kind of going that way a little bit at first oh, it is going up that way. hill yeah we need to launch down that hill okay. so that's a perfect direction so the uh, well we should probably walk up there a little bit and check it out That's my boy. My nose is stuffy. I love Hoorah. tissue. Fly camping in the mountains. Check out this spot. Uh-huh. With all the blue flowers. Got a really nice uh, shot of the, of the trikes right now in the sun. Yeah. This is a cool spot. Yeah, the wind's coming up there. It might actually be in the rotor here. Oh, we have trikes. Yeah. Kind of hard to tell from the grass. It gets like wobbly. Well, let's go walk over there. Let's see if we hit full throttle and just go this way. We got lots of space between those trees. But it would be nice to get some wind so we could take off as slow as possible. We do have a bit of downhill. And a little bit more when we get to here. It's just a little rough. Wind is coming up this hill. Yeah, there's some decent wind right there. But I don't think we want to roll through these weeds. should pick up in a little bit but we don't want too much wind because we're also going to be launching in the rotor of the trees but 
we should probably tear down real quick and just be ready. So if we get our window, we can take off. High five. You missed it. What was that? What was that? The pocket's open. Part of fly camping. Of course, you scope it out really good before you land there, but then once you land, it also depends on wind direction. The other things we could fly off this cliff. The, uh, oh, this isn't too bad here at all. This is no problem. Let's see about this exit, though. Well, steep drop off, you'll be in the air immediately. Oh, yeah, this would work perfect. No problem. Oh, yeah, this is perfect, Troy. Well, not perfect, but pretty dang good. So if we do get wind from this direction, or no wind, I mean, right now the wind's blowing from that way, but... Yeah, but if we have no wind, or if it switches directions, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of wind coming down this, but this would make for a great launch because you'll be off the ground so fast as the ground drops away from you. That'd be cool. See, like right there we have no wind because if we launch from right there, and get the wing up. I mean, if you have your wing up by the time you get to here and you roll down, you're going to be off the ground by right there. And if there's no wind, you're not going to be in the rotor and we're flying dominator, so it don't matter anyway. We just wouldn't want to intentionally be in a really crazy strong one. But yeah, look at this. This is even decently smooth. So do you want to launch your or low weeds. Well, the wind is coming from that direction, so I'm thinking that's probably plan A, but it looks like we have lots of options. Yeah. So we got plan A, B, C. Plan A is we'll launch straight out that way. Plan B is we come down the hill. Plan C, we go off this way. Say a prayer for us. What? And Heavenly Father, if it were safe, there's something full that we could come out here and be safe, that we could come and fly, and please help us that we can get the right direction and speed of wind so we can get out of here okay. And please bless that um, we can be all right when we're launching, and we say things in the name of Christ's name. Amen. Roll into it. Go, go, go. Go a little left. Right. Brakes. Heavy brakes. Lots of brakes. Lots of brakes. Turn right. Beautiful job. A plus. Perfect. Watch the turbulence. Fly out to the front of the mountain. Nice job, Troy. Nice job. Super try do 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 And thank you God
Thread the needle, baby. Thread the needle. Dominator, baby. Builds lift at the slowest possible speed. And gives you the highest possible top end speed. Hoorah. That's just awesome. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the lift. Say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Also, of course, thanks to God for helping us with the correct wind direction. Oh yeah, fly camp and baby, dominator in an air trike. <laughs> Super Troy getting a little jiggy. Okay, Troy, bring it over. Let's link up. I want to take some pictures of you. I could just bring it right back to the mountain so I can get the mountain in the shots there. Pay attention to me, try and stay right in front of me. Rich Soren with Super Troy. My 14 year old son has been flying since he was 12. This is so awesome. Flying right up against the cliffs. It's a little funky today. You can see by the glider bouncing around, but that's why we fly Dominators. Hello. Look at that view. So awesome. Birds diving off. Look at this. After an awesome night of fly camping at 9,100 feet. That was awesome. That's probably the coolest spot we've ever gone. That was slick. Nice break off right. And you turn hard right. Yep, get around. So watch the trailing edge of his glider. Oh, got a little funky air. And you can watch him active piloting. You can see his hands moving. Small, tiny little corrections. Right there, glider tried to go forwards and he stopped it. Little throttle. Just absolutely beautiful piloting. Just feeling the brakes. Putting it right where he wants it, but also keeping the glider perfectly stable. Hey! You can still see weeds on the wheels of the trike. That air trike will really blast through a lot of weeds just like a swamp boat because that flat top cage is so strong 
incredibly strong with the Kevlar netting, where most units are extremely flimsy. They take only a couple of pounds of pressure to flex the cage and netting back into the prop. So any little whack from a weed like that would totally destroy the unit. The cage would flex into the propeller and the whole unit would catastrophically self-destruct. But with the flat top, it's so strong, you can literally just bash right through weeds like that. There's a video where I'm flying uh, one foot off the deck through 12 foot weeds and the weeds are literally crashing over the top of me. And it just blasts right through them like a swamp boat. It is seriously cool. But it also comes in handy when you need to fly camp and you need to launch in some brush. If you happen to blast through some brush, no problem. Bring it to the right, Troy, bring it to the mountain. We're just gonna follow this mountain range all the way to the, uh, the next side and then we'll turn in. So bring it right up to the mountain. I'm proud of my son. That was awesome. Perfect launch. So launching in that bowl like that, that gear and skill is absolutely critical. For anyone looking into the sport, you know, you see things like that and you don't understand how critical every single piece is. We were literally launching in a bowl behind the tree line and behind the trees. So we were in the rotor of those trees, which means it was really funky air right there. So the Dominator allows you to have the best stability and safety so you can keep the glider open. But pilot skill is actually even a bigger factor. Without active piloting, that glider is over 5,000 times more likely to take a collapse. And as you can imagine, if you'd have taken a collapse right in there behind the tree line, that would be very, very ugly, not to mention you'd be stuck in the mountains. So it's very, very important that you have the skill and you have the right gear. Then, because the Dominator is uh, it's designed as a mountain wing, so it's designed to launch absolutely as easy as possible, which as you can see from that launch, you needed it to launch as easily as possible. The next thing is the very low aspect ratio design builds the highest possible lift at the lowest possible speed. So trying to launch a trike over ruddy, bumpy, you know, rough, rocky ground, that is obviously not manicured ground. It might look smooth to the eye, but that was so rough. If you tried to foot launch on that, you could easily twist an ankle. But to be able to do that with a trike, you not only need the best trike, but you also need that glider to be able to start building lift at the lowest possible speed and build the most possible lift. Because the Dominator is the world's fastest glider, you also have that speed to cut through the higher mountain winds that can come up without warning. Depending on where you're at and depending on the day, you could all of a sudden get hit with 30, 35 mile an hour winds. And if you're flying some slow boaty piece of crap, that would be very bad because you would be blown backwards over the mountain and there's nothing you could do about it. So lots of factors as to why we fly the Dominator and why that Dominator is the best. And of course, that's why we fly it. And I really don't care what glider's the best. The, I'm not specific to any particular model or brand. That is just the best glider I've ever found in all of my years and years and years of flying. So it is kind of important to look at the skill level of who you're talking to. And if you're talking to the most experienced pilot, you know, they gotta have a little more valuable things to say than Joe Blow Newbie, you know, who's just starting out and says, oh yeah, this is great. You know, they don't have a freaking clue. They've only flown a handful of gliders in their lifetime compared to someone that's been testing gliders, you know, for 20 years now. I mean, it's just a long dang time.
Alonso, Dominator, baby. That was really incredible. And of course, that on top of, always say your prayers, just to make sure you stack all the odds in your favor, and that's one more of those odds you can stack in your favor, is uh, keeping the commandments, doing what you're supposed to do, having God on your back, so that when you need help, he's right there, and he wants to help you. But those who don't keep the commandments, yeah, he can help you, but you know, how often do you get paid by companies you don't work for? So you either serve God, in which case you got him on your side, or you don't serve God, in which case it's a little bit harder to try and ask for help. A little slower to listen. So in my experience, if you do what you're supposed to do, God is very quick to give you that little help and that little uh, extra boost when you need it. Dominator, baby! Flat tops! That was so awesome! So let's compare the Dominator to what some other, you know, high-profile pilots are flying. Because people don't understand how big that difference is. So you take a guy like uh, Tucker Gott, who's gotten some notoriety as a newbie out there doing crazy things, trying to get views. He's flying the absolute worst, most horrifically unsafe gear in the history of the sport. It's so unsafe, the previous guy in his position marketing that gear died on that gear. So the other guy, basically Tucker got, is the replacement for the guy who already died on that gear. He's flying a totally uncertified class wing. So you've got the highest level of safety in the Dominator with a beginner certified class wing, so the highest level of safety certification, versus a guy flying the absolute worst and least safe glider that can't pass any level of safety certifications because it's a total death trap. Then, why do they fly death traps? Well, if it had more performance, you would have that excuse of saying, well, I sacrificed some safety to get extra performance. But I set the world speed record on the Dominator. So you don't get extra performance from the death traps. You get the extra performance from the safest glider on the market. So think about that logically. Why the heck would you fly a glider that has the absolute worst safety and it doesn't have the performance to warrant some sort of an excuse for having such horrible safety? Now, also, because it's the fastest, that automatically means it's the most efficient because the glider that gives you the highest top speed is making the most out of the power that you have. So that glider that can make that maximum speed is also the most efficient. Again, a very critical thing when you need to launch in a bowl on top of a mountain behind a tree line in the rotor on rough, trashy ground and you need to get off the ground as fast as possible. That's where you need that extreme lift and efficiency. Then you have handling. The Dominator is literally handles better than some acro gliders. Literally gliders made specifically for acrobatics and the Dominator handles better. Uh, you can see my side-by-side -side testing through the years. It just handles so light and so flickable, which is why you can see me doing all the maneuvers on the Dominator that I used to do on acrobatics gliders. So that Dominator just rocks in every single way. You got the efficiency, you have the speed, you have the safety, but you also have that ability to launch at the very lowest possible speed. So it makes no sense whatsoever to fly a totally uncertified class death trap when the Dominator gives you all the performance and the best safety all at the same time. Kind of crazy. So Dominator's the only way to go. Same with the flat top. You can watch the video series where I named 304 reasons 
that competent pilots only fly flat tops. There's just no way I would literally quit the sport before I would fly a death trap unit like a scout or a mini plane or a fresh breeze or total garbage like that, like a Black Hawk or Nirvana that literally have not had a safety update in about 40 years of the sport. So the same injuries and deaths have been happening over and over and over in the exact same ways on that gear. I mean, why would you fly gear that so many other people have already been injured and killed on when you've got gear like the flat top nobody's ever died on in the history of the sport? Again, you just put logic and reason, and it seems like some people in the world today throw all logic and reason right out the window. So if you want to have fun in the sport and be able to have the most capability, but at the same time have the absolute highest level of safety on gear nobody has ever died on, that's the flat top and dominator. Let's go flying. You want to do a touch and go at the church? his rotor. No problemo. It's a dominator, baby. Dominator. Ha 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 ha. Woo! Super try. That was awesome. Another grand adventure! Flat tops, baby! As you can see, you can literally fly the Dominator right behind the other wing. Because it's no problem! Wake, rotor, yeah, whatever. That's for other people to worry about. Not flat tops and supers and Dominators. It's a whole different world when you actually have true real skill and the very best gear in the history of the sport just makes a whole different ball game it's not even the same sport i mean you fly some death trap gear 
and you know that any second that glider could take a massive collapse to a backflip 180 and lock you into a spiral face first into the ground, and there is nothing you can do about it on a death trap glider they call reflex. Those are the absolute worst, least safe gliders in the, in the history of the sport. You could buy a piece of crap off eBay from the 1970s. It would be safer than a brand new glider they call reflex. So, fun stuff, as long as you get the right gear. Super Troy! Ha <laughs> ha! That was awesome! Give me five! 